Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, thank you for allowing us to come out here tonight, sweet Heavenly Father God, as we lift up words, the spoken words, sweet Heavenly Father, to lift up your name, God. Thank you, God, for creativity, God. Thank you, God, for allowing, for allowing us to praise you out of the box, God. Thank you, God, for your spirit, God, because we know we are here to praise you. It's not a show, sweet Heavenly Father God. It's praise and it's worship. It is to take our talents and to lift you up, God. And we just want to say hallelujah, hallelujah. This place has already been anointed. We've been in here all day, sweet Heavenly Father God, praising and rehearsing your name. So all of the leftover anointing is still festering in here, God. And we know that you're about to just knock us out, sweet Heavenly Father, giving us enough grace, God, to make it through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, God. We're ready, sweet Heavenly Father God. We ask you that you open up the gates, sweet Heavenly Father God, and let us in, God. And just allow us, sweet Heavenly Father, to do nothing here, God, to praise you, Jesus. And we just say thank you, God. Lift up every person that has volunteered their services today, sweet Heavenly Father God. We thank you for all of the talent that is here, God. We thank you for every person that walked through this door, sweet Heavenly Father God. Because we have faith in you, sweet Heavenly Father. We know when our faith says yes and when we put you to the test that you will provide everything that we need, God. And thank you, God, for the first, sweet Heavenly Father God. For the first, sweet Heavenly Father God. For the first, sweet Heavenly Father God. For the first, spoken word events we heavenly father god at walker temple ame we are doing new things god to lift up your name sweet heavenly father god and we just say thank you jesus thank you god in the name of jesus amen, amen. now we would like to have our welcome by sir wellington brookings hello everyone Welcome to Walker Temple AME Church. We serve number one God and number one district. And I just want to welcome you to our The Inspiration, Word of Inspiration here at Walker Temple. We're sponsored by the YPD. This is a fundraiser to help the YPD help Leilani Henderson get to the green and white pageant for the fifth district. Welcome. I am the master of ceremony, and I thought uh, I should open up with a few words. Mistakes are made, big and small, but no matter what, God loves us through it all. Even though he doesn't always approve of the choices we make, he promised us he'd never take our free will away. Now, I know that we are creatures born into sin, given grace and mercy, and his promise that we will be born again. But honestly, I find my mind's eyes stuck viewing doubt, but on my worthiness of the throne. Not of the fact that his protection I can't live without. If faith without works is dead, and death is the wage of sin, and heaven is a goal unattainable by my own actions, how can I possibly get in? I guess my focus right now should be becoming a better person and trust the storms that God sends my way will make me a worthy Christian. Amen. Next up, we have Brother Jermaine Pearson. Test. Oh, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. So glad, glad to be here. I want to thank you for the invite. Uh, I felt welcome when I first walked in, so uh, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, how many of y'all know God will give you a word in the most random places? Yeah. Is anybody? So um, I was watching TV, watching uh, TV One or something like that, and the Cosby Show. I, I'm a big fan of the Cosby Show. And then someone had just updated their Facebook status. It said something like, uh, yes, I'm single, and you're going to have to be amazing to change that. <laughs> and it happened as I was watching the Cosby show. So uh, I said, you know what, that's, 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 that's my testimony right now. So uh, I wrote this piece. It's called Where's My Claire? OK? So this is. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use the mic. Is that okay? Women are always asking me, Jermaine, why are you almost 30 years old and still single when you attend one of the largest congregations in the country where women outnumber the men at least five to one? Clearly, you should be able to find somebody. See, let me break this down. Let me decode this for you. Uh, they really say, you know what? You seem like good husband material. We should go out sometime. And I just politely smiled and I nodded and said, you know what? I'm just focusing on getting myself together. 
Well, let me decode that. What I'm really trying to say is, even though you're very attractive, you are far from my type. Because I can tell by your Facebook statuses and your tweets that you're probably not the one for me. And I can tell by the photos that you post on Instagram that you have no clue as to who I really am. Because if you did, you would know that I would like for some things to be left up to the imagination. Amen. But you know I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just smile and I say, you know what? I'm just waiting on God. But you know what the truth of the matter is? I really am. As cliche as it sounds, I'm waiting on God to reveal who my wife is. I guess you can say, I'm waiting for my Claire Huxtable. Yes, where's my Claire? And I know some of you might be thinking, how can you base your expectations of a wife on a character who was fictitious? Because in my mind, she does in fact exist. And I've written down my list. Yes, ladies, that's, that's right, I too have a list. <laughs> Write the vision, make it plain. And I believe we have not because we ask not. So I have a list. And some of those characteristics on my list just so happen to resemble those of Claire Huxtable. So where's my Claire? I believe that every man should have a woman like Claire in his life. She was a loving mother, working professional and a devoted wife. Talk about a woman. She was strong yet graceful, bold yet tasteful, intelligent, beautiful, bilingual, and classy. And although she was outspoken, she was never too sassy. And even with her modern imperfections, she was still genuine and real. I dare you to say something bad about Claire. <laughs> I dare you. I dare you to call a phony a fake. She was a ride or die sister. Y'all remember how she wrestled and caught that snake? Y'all remember that? Uh -huh. she, was, uh, she was about as real as they could get. Even with a broken leg or a sprained foot, she could still walk into a room and wild crowd and have her brothers taking a second look. Wonder Woman had nothing on her. And she may not have been able to move cars off of people, but she was able to move mountains with her words. Elvin, if you don't get yourself together and drop these macho attitudes, you are never gonna have anybody ever bring you anything, anywhere, anyplace, anytime, ever. <laughs> yeah, she got it right together. Not to mention, she broke many barriers. The only black woman in her law firm fought for justice in a courtroom and came out a winner, and she still managed to make it home by five to cook her family dinner. And I'm not saying she was perfect, I'm just saying she was the perfect woman for Cliff. They complimented each other, equally yoked in every aspect, and the love that they had for one another was not fiction, but it was fact. To all my single people out there, what if I told you that somewhere out there, there's somebody waiting to be your Heathcliff or your Claire? Can you believe that God created someone specifically designed for you? But often at times we miss out on our blessing because we are impatient and we go do what we want to do. See, we tend to deviate from God's plan. But I'm here to remind you that when you deviate from God's plan, you end up with an Ishmael on your hands instead of an Isaac. And now you're dealing with baby mama drama and baby daddy drama talking about, man, I can't be why she's crazy. <laughs> or better yet, I can't be with no man who can't keep a job. Uh, but in my opinion, there's a bigger problem than that. See, society has put the notion in our minds that the nuclear family no longer exists. That having both mother and father in the household is simply archaic, but it can exist if we make it. See, God wants us to have the very best, yet we settle for less in our own attempt to be satisfied. And what happens? We end up stuck. We end up stuck in a situation or a relationship that we had no business being in to begin with. If you find yourself in isolation, tears streaming down your face, crying to the Lord, how did I end up in this place? How did I end up here? You. You are how you ended up there. See, you knew he was crazy. You knew she was crazy when you met her. And you knew that he didn't have a real job when you first met him. And the writing was on the wall, but you deviated from God's plans, and you took matters into your own hands. See. When you are spiritually transformed, you begin to see things differently. You begin to see people differently. And you begin to see yourself in a different light. Yeah. And you realize you don't have to settle for less because you don't have to be with someone who you don't need or someone who you don't like. Uh -huh. And that's why I'm waiting for my clear. And you better believe I'm every bit of the man Heathcliff was. And until I find my clear, I'm going to remain single. And you're going to have to be really awesome and amazing to change that. And my wife. She may not have graduated top of a class at Hillman, but uh, she probably could have gone to Howard Hampton or Spelman. 
and she might not have marched on Washington and heard Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, but she might have protested for Jenna Simpson or might have occupied Wall Street. Right. And when I see her, I will know it's her. And like Miguel says, she will be a sure thing because when a man findeth the wife, he findeth a good thing. And I'm trusting God for my wife, whom will be sent from above. So, who will be sent from above? So, ladies, when you see me at church, you can shave off three seconds from your church hug because <laughs> some of y'all tend to hold on just a little bit too long. I remember Claire; she sang a song at Hillman's Convocation. It said, "Seek ye first." The kingdom of his love and be faithful in everything you do. If you just trust and never doubt what he says, all good things will be added unto you. Uh -huh. And for my wife, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I want to thank you, Brother Jermaine. I want to thank you for your wise words. Amen. They definitely will. Uh, I believe next up we have Sister Malika Harding. Okay, we have Brother Ray Anderson. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Thank you, brother. I've been married 19 years, and you make me revisit the mirror. I thank you for that work. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. How do I praise? How do we praise? How do we praise? When I was born, my manhood was in my future. When I was 10 years old, my manhood was on the playground. At 20 years old, my manhood was between my legs. At 30 years old, my manhood was in my race. At 40 years old, my manhood was on my mind. At 50 years old, how do I pray? When I'm 60 years old, my manhood might be in my son. At 70, 80, and 90, my manhood may be in my memories. But how do I praise today? How do we praise? Must I care what it looks like? Can I just tap my foot when there's something that moves me? Can I jump and dance like David danced? How do I praise? As a man from the African diaspora, the African boot dancers showed a way. When I pledged Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, I thought that my praise was in my steps. But at 51 years old, I can't care anymore what my praise looks like. I've been through the fire. He has brought me out. So it doesn't matter how I praise. If I praise, I can praise in my silence. I can praise in my walk. I can praise in my breath that I take. None of these breaths have been given to me but from the Father, and so I thank him. When I was 13 years old, my mother gave me a poem. She says, learn this. I was 13 years old, and it was Rudyard Kipling. 
If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give away to hating, yet don't live too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to, broken, and stoop, and build them up with worn out tools. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can walk with kings and keep your virtue or talk with crowds, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can feel the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is man, more, you'll be a man, my son. At 13, I learned those words. I can say today that I have lived every single line in that poem. At 13, these were words that I can think of. But at this stage of the game, my manhood is no longer in question, which frees me to praise in the way the Father moves me. If my motivation is right, who's going to stop me from beating the drum or playing the cymbal or singing or laughing or jumping up and down when I'm 100 years old? Maybe I'll sit right here and maybe I can't move too fast, but slowly my eyes will look over and it says, praise him. I may not move beyond that, but I tell you what, if I see it, I'll have my memories. It says make a joyful noise in the good book that we read. Make a joyful noise. In my life, I just want my joyful noise to equal praise. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ray. Now we have Sister Malika Harding. So we're going to move from manhood to womanhood. <laughs> this is a poem for any single ladies in the church today. It's uh, titled, You and Me. Okay. So you, you have crossed over the waters and returned several times. I want to swing on the vine in your mind and explore. Touch the shores your feet have worn. Know the wars your life speaks of. Run my fingers down your battle scars. Walk a mile a minute in your shoes and dance dance freely across your laugh lines. Before my heartbeat races to match the pace of yours, I want to feel you before I feel you beside me. So sweetly you declared, baby, you are me. But what saith the Father? Do you have my daddy's permission? Am I cut from your cage? Or will choosing you mean losing me? Post-engagement will I be a pawn in your world, trapped? Why my dreams drift off somewhere on the promises and possibilities of yesteryear. If you like what you see, can I stay me and have you stay? Me, I am a water baptized, born again believer and the possibilities of my imagination taking me anywhere. My soul sings of places my eyes have never seen. I want to take you there. My pen boasts of rivers I have yet to float upstream. I want to meet you where our past lives connect and we build a future, we make a fortune, we mend the nations and shake up the continents while waking the universe with the cries of our lovemaking in holy matrimony. Before your heartbeat slows to match the pace of mine, I want you to feel me before you feel me beside you. So if you like what you see, can I stay me and have you Stay. Uh, 
Thank you, Sister Malika. I want to welcome my YPD director, Sister Jamel Rogers. All right. So the title of the poem is Who You Rockin' With? Not grammatically correct, but follow me. Yeah, I'm talking about God and JC. And don't forget about the Holy Spirit's flies he can be. Cause ain't nobody fresher than the trend, 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 trinity. So who you rocking with? Cause I'm rocking with God, the one that created the whole world in seven days. The one who is all powerful and has that agape love. The provider of new beginnings because his mercy is new every day. The seeker of our hearts and not our past. The father to the fatherless, the mother to the motherless, the breath of new life. The only one that gave his ultimate sacrifice and set his son down to us so we can be free. So who you rocking with? Cause yeah, I'm talking about God and JC. And don't forget about the Holy Spirit's fly as he can be. Cause ain't nobody fresher than a trend, trend, trend. Trinity. So who you rocking with? Because I'm rocking with JC, Jesus Christ that is, the one that died for you and me and set the captives free. The one that wakes me up every day to see a new day. The one that won't let anyone stand in my way. The one that is my provider, way maker, father and friend. The one that continues to forgive me over and over and over and over again. The one that set Mary free of seven demons. The one that made the blind men see but didn't walk around this earth like ain't nobody fresh than me because yeah I'm talking about God and JC and don't forget about the Holy Spirit's flies he can be because ain't nobody fresher than a trend 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 Trinity. So who you rocking with? Because I'm rocking with the Holy Spirit that fills me up from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. The Holy Spirit that saved a wretch like you and me. The Holy Spirit that covers me and breaks every stronghold that tries to come my way. The Holy Spirit that can't be defeated. So I say, Satan, get behind thee. Because yeah, I'm talking about God and JC. And don't forget about the Holy Spirit's fly as he can be. Because ain't nobody fresher than the trend. 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 Trinity, and I'm rocking with the whole Trinity, the flyest, freshest, all powerful entity, because I'm a sinner who's probably going to sin again, sin again, sin again. Lord, forgive me for things I don't understand, 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 but I'm glad I never want to be alone, and I know that my rock, redeemer, and refiner come from the Trinity. So come follow my click, 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 and who you rocking with? Just got word that you've been signed to Kirk Franklin's label. <laughs> Next up, I want to welcome the new disciples. Boy, that's a hard act to follow right there. <laughs> I don't know. Can we get that music going? Yeah, we're going to do some praising right now because, man, that's right. Can you turn that up some? Give me some volume on that. All right. All right. Everybody put your hands together. I want everybody to stand up on their feet, matter of fact, and praise the Lord with us one time. I want to introduce you to the new disciples of Greater Faith Baptist Church. And I'm about to tell you my story. Every morning that I wake up, I got to give them all the praise because he brings me through adversity day after day. And now I must say, he's the head of my life. He asked me on my job talking about About Jesus Christ. I was born and raised in the church. The power of Jesus Christ has lived in me since birth. And now I'm going to take a stand, give him the glory. Like the one is saying, ain't no need to worry. You must believe he's always on time. Let the Holy Spirit into your heart and mind. If nothing else, believe me when I say it to pray. Leave it all in God's hands and trouble will go away. I'm not a prophet, just saying what he put on my heart. And if I was called to preach, then here is my story. Dear Lord, take me and I will do thy will. I spoke it last year and now I'm a deacon for real. Now when I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now when I say greater, you say faith. Come on, greater. Faith. Greater. Faith. Now when I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now when I say greater, you say faith. Come on, greater. 
greater. My papa is a preacher and my mama's in the choir. All I know is Christ is the holy messiah. I do what I'm told, everything with the youth. I'm now learning how to rap. And we got a new crew. I like to read comments, but the story's all fake. That's why I read the Bible, because there is no debate. Now what about Superman, Batman, and Spider? The real superhero is Christ Almighty. I might fall asleep, but I'm here every week. Having fun with the youth and not being in them streets. I'm transforming from a little kid into a young man. God loves me and you, and he has a plan. Jesus loves you. This I know. I got a good family who tells me so. From this day forward, do you promise to do your best? I go to greater faith, so my answer is simply yes. Now when I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now when I say full of, you say gospel. Full of. Gospel. Full of. Gospel. Now when I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now when I say full of, you say gospel. Full of. Full of. My name is Mike Mike. What? I'm a junior deacon. I love Christ and that's who I'm thinking. You all know me. I sit in the front row with the chairman of the digging board. Praise the Lord. I love church. Church. I tell all my friends, now they follow me to Sunday school and my mama's man. We got Bible study Wednesday nights, gain the knowledge. To take with us when we go away to college. But that's in the future, so back to the present. Trust in the Lord, remember, be reverent. My mama tell me every day, God is good. So to please him, I do everything I should. We the new disciples of greater faith. A piss is a ministry, God is a face. Take a stand, cause we are the future. Spread the whole gospel and let the Lord use you. Now when I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. Now when I say greater, you say faith. Greater. Faith. Greater. Faith. Now when I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Christ. Now when I say greater, you say faith. Greater. Faith. Greater. Faith. Now when I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now when I say full of, you say gospel. Full of gospel. Full of gospel. Thank you. Thank you to the new disciples. We are about to move on to our open mic portion. I believe we have Sister Josephine and Josie Jones. Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm actually Johanna. They messed it up on the program. <laughs> Um, we're just going to sing a little song. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. If you are falling, then I would catch you. You need a light. Yeah. I'll find a match. Because I love the way you say good morning. And you. Take me the way I am If you are chilly Here, take my sweater You need a light He'll give a match Cause I love the way you call me baby and you take me the way I am. I buy you Rogaine if you start losing all your hair. And I'll give you towels to clear your tears. Cause I love you more than you. And you take me the way I am. And you take me the way I am. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, I want to apologize for not having my reading glasses on, but I overlooked Sister April Hamilton. Amen. Well, it was the Lord's plan. <laughs> we got Brother Quasi up next on the list. Hello, church. Good evening. I am on program, and um, I really wanted to kind of do this one because I was talking to my cousin the other day, and I didn't know that she was going through a lot of changes with her son because he was not getting the needed education, and she actually had to get a lawyer and go downtown and really fight just for the school to recognize that her son needed additional assistance. And um, I wrote this poem uh, during the time we had an education portion of our, um, our spoken word ministry here at church. So the name of this poem is called Expand Your Mind, and it's basically a reflection of what I experienced when I was coming up in the school district of Los Angeles Unified. Heart beating faster than a drummer in an African drum circle. Sweat dripping, breath left my body heavy. Running through the gates of my secondary higher educational facility, bells ring, I didn't make it. I'm running late. <laughs> Just got swept in the tardy sweep and my punishment is to miss my whole first period class. Well, my bad. I guess I'll just sit here and chill. No worries because I'm sure my teacher will only be teaching on how to insert the latest blockbuster DVD to entertain a group of young black faces and I didn't want to see the Titanic anyway. Some of my teachers like to take it easy, sit back, calm, collect, and pass you through on to the next best teacher that taught education. The process of giving or receiving systematic instruction. Systematic system, systematic system, systematic system, systematic system. Systematically issuing outdated books with outdated information, studying from math books with outdated equations. Systematically underfunding schools in underprivileged communities where humble, proud parents send their babies off to school just with one wish to become the best and the brightest, good, good grades, and roll off to college, graduate, and hopefully get a job to pay off their student loan debts. You know the system. You're trying to hold me down, so what? I can tell you don't want me to excel, so what? Despite what you intended, I got mine and I'm still getting it. Not a slave to media, tabloid, magazines, reality TV, and nursery rhyme, hip hop, lyrics, polarizing propaganda, and every other distraction under the sun that tries to distract me from reality. Like the sun, I rise to dismantle your disguise because I'm a critical thinker, a, I'm a critical thinker able to decipher your lies. See, if there's anything to fear, it would be that of an educated mind. Equipped with the laws of physics, the periodic table, economics, the constitution, law, history, art, political science, blended with a bit of common sense passed down from a wise great grandmother. We're living in a time where you need to be awake. And education is the best tool to escape. It is the process of freeing and elevating your mind to a higher level of knowing. So turn off your TV and open up a book. I don't care how old you are, we need you woke. I don't care how old you are, we need you woke. I don't care how old you are, we need you woke. I dare you to try to get inside of an educated mind. I dare you to try to get inside of an educated mind. You shine the brightest, so go ahead and shine, shine, shine. And then this person was like, I'm still going off of freedom. So hopefully somebody else can get the same blessing. Amen. Freedom. What is freedom? 
It's freedom the sound of the school bell or your teacher telling you that you don't have weekend homework. It's freedom your mother telling you that you can hang out with your friends or your father saying you don't have to do your chores. Freedom, freedom, what is freedom to you? It's freedom saying what you want to say, when you want to say, and how you want to say it, or sitting where you want to sit without being told to move. Freedom, freedom, what is freedom to you? Or living where you want to live without worrying if the neighbors will be putting a burning cross in your front yard or someone will start shooting while you're walking down the street. Freedom. Freedom, freedom, what is freedom to you? It's freedom prancing around the streets in your six inch stiletto heels or telling lies to get what you want, not realizing it's only adding to your demise. Freedom, freedom, what is freedom to you? Be mindful what captivates you because it could be the very thing that holds you in bondage. For God came to set the captives free and you keep saying, but Lord, I love how it used to be. Freedom, freedom, what is freedom to you? It's freedom playing with this one and that one creeping and sleeping yet only to end with you weeping and reaping what you sowed that bad seed that didn't supply not one need freedom freedom what is freedom to you it's freedom spreading rumors telling lies not living in truth because you're afraid to be authentic real and a leader instead of a popular fake and a follower freedom freedom what is freedom to you it's freedom pushing weight working the pole or twerking your way to the chop just to stay with that new new 2012 sitting on 24s. Freedom, freedom, what is freedom to you? It's freedom saying, well, when so-and-so is in charge, we used to do it like this, and so I see no need to change, or I am and have been the HPIC head person in charge, so it's my way or the highway. Freedom, freedom, what is freedom to you? Well, I say freedom to me is Faithfully staying ready to entrust God with every endeavor, not destroying opportunities that he has for me just to meet my needs. I said freedom is faithfully staying ready to entrust God with every endeavor, not destroying opportunities that he has for me just to meet my needs. So freedom, freedom, what is freedom to you? Deliver yourself today. I want to thank you guys, but I will not let another person go up until my brother, Quasi Davis, comes <laughs> and says what the Lord put on his heart. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. So it's a, it's a women's history month, so we're going to do something uh, about women. Let's see. Uh, so I wrote this one for, um, for all the young ladies who are in the STEM sciences. Uh, this one's for you. It comes to us from the book of Genesis. 26, 17. Lucas Odds translation. So Luke Skywalker moved to the Dagobah system and lived with his uncle instead. He reclaimed the lightsaber his father had used, which had been put into hiding after Anakin Skywalker's death. If you don't know that story, perhaps you can identify with this one. So Isaac moved to the Garaw Valley instead. He reopened the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. See, in this action, Isaac had inherited his father's movement. He had usurped the responsibility to follow through with the vision. Follow through. Follow through. On your way to your seat, touch somebody and tell them, I want to be a Jedi like my father. My father grew up in a time where there was no such thing as Oprah Winfrey, where there was no such thing as Michelle Obama, where there was no such thing as Beyonce. And there certainly, certainly was no such thing as Captain Catherine May Jameson, the first African American to pilot a spaceship and leave the earth behind. 
but she didn't do it on her own. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. And it's almost sancophonic in nature that we look over our shoulders into the eyes of our ancestry and we get down on our knees and ask for guidance that we might follow through with the vision. And we cry out and they call back, use the force, Luke. My God, that's how she knew she could follow through. That's how you know, because God can go from the earth to the heavens and back again unscathed. That's how you know when there have no model, when there is no sample. God can be an example. My hope yeah. is built on nothing less than yeah. Yeah. Jesus' blood and yeah. righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest pain, but holy lean on Jesus' name, on Christ yeah. the solid rock. Do or do not, there is no try. Follow through with the vision. Thank you, Brother Davis. Now I would like to welcome his lovely wife, sister, Dr. Tama. Let me get it right, let me get it right. Brian Davis. That was my Dr. Huxtable. Woo! <laughs> Glory, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We had uh, Black History Month in February, Women's Month in March, and then we are in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I just got up and saw my whole family is here. Hi, Harding family. Yay. All right. Praise the Lord. So this piece is our role with ancestors. And I want you to know wherever you're going in life, sometimes you're gonna feel by yourself and we are never in it by ourselves. I have worked some jobs that were difficult to be at and I had to be reminded, you might physically be there by yourself, but you roll with ancestors, you have backup, amen? And I'm so glad amongst those ancestors is Jesus the Christ and so we are never alone. Just trying to tell somebody I'm not by myself. Amen, amen. I roll with ancestors. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, you don't want to mess with me. Still serving G-O-D, beyond the day I D-I-E. You attempted to assassinate me and that ridiculous plot set off your worst nightmare. I am a spirit woman and as such I face funerals like birthdays. I sing freedom songs and funeral dirges interchangeably. I eat bullets like power pellets. In fact, 41 flying bullets are not nearly enough to fill me to the brim. Your gun silencer while putting my tongue on pause merely gives me more time to marinate on the mega bomb I will release in your neighborhood, detonating transformation in the life of a Klansman near you. You marvel at my balance in the midst of the insanity you have unleashed in my community. But there are hundreds of thousands of spirits standing in the Atlantic keeping my soul's boat steady. Yeah. You wonder why your storms don't give me the blues, but I've got lynch sisters and a crucified brother draped across my dome, blocking out the madness you send my way. In fact, I've got two grandfathers who have crossed over and are now enjoying eternity guarding my door at night. And by day, I walk with sojourner spirit weaved into my cornrows. And Harriet's heavy breath is the wind blowing before me, consuming your superficial flames before I even have time to know fear. I've got Malcolm's eyes in the back of my head and Martin's pulpit is in my blood. My great-great-grandma Alice is currently leading a 24-hour powwow just to keep the warrior spirit in me rising. And the entire passed over soldiers of the Zulu and Sutu peoples, the Ashanti and Igbo people, the Pele and Basa peoples, claim me as their divine daughter beloved. And you thought you could take me out by buying me, by shaming me, by silencing me, by shooting me? Please. You must have me confused with a weeping willow. When in fact, standing before you is a prolific palm tree with roots stretching back to Eve's grandmother. When I would give up, I can't, I've got Langston Hughes in my pen. When I would lay down, I can't, I've got Audrey Lord in my spine. 
When I would shut up, I can't, I've got James Baldwin in my throat. When I would sit back, Ife, I can't, I've got Phyllis Wheatley on my mind. When I would silence my soul, I can't, I've got James Weldon Johnson in my eyes. So you might as well surrender, because I roll with ancestors and we just don't know how to die. I said, one, two, three, we're rolling with G-O-D, soaring with the Trinity, because Christians, we are free, we are free, we are free. I said, oh, one, two, three, we're rolling with G-O-D, soaring with the Trinity, because Christians, we are free, we are free, we are free. I said, oh, one, two, three, we're rolling with G-O-D, soaring with the Trinity, because Christians, we are free, we are free. We are free. Next up, we have on program <laughs> Sister Asia. You guys enjoying yourselves today? Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out. It's been a great show. Sorry, can you start the show? Go. Who gave you a detailed description of who and what your place is in this life? Who lied to you and told you you weren't anything? Well, it's a new time and a new story, a new light, a new glory. You don't know what God got in store for you. He made you in his image, in his likeliness, and you can't for sure achieve anything your heart sings. <laughs> See? All you got to do is change the story. Y'all are all mighty and magnificent, heaven sent heaven meant and angelic choirs hum your name as you walk down the street of destiny <laughs> you are king you are queen who told you who lied who lied who lied who lied who told you you have first rate great a your your blessing you're beautiful your smile radiates joy and lightens those around you. You spread out peace and happiness. So happiness surrounds you. God didn't make no mistakes when you were created. He gave you authority and a testimony. You made it in the... And if you're going through, if you're going through, if you're going through a hard time. Huh, and if you don't know why, why, why. Just know that God's glow is shining bright all through your life. He's molding you, taking you higher, creating you into the soldier that you were meant to be. It's you. It's you. Uh, there's a plan, there's a plan, there's a plan, there's a plan for you. You. There's a plan, there's a plan, there's a plan for you. For you. Take off your shoes in. <laughs> Let's walk this journey in. Don't be afraid. God got your back. Believe that you are. You are bad. I mean bad. Michael Jackson thriller. Barack Obama. Yes, I can. James Brown super bad. Bad in the Holy Ghost. Bad in the rumor knows. Bad in the rumor. Yes, it's no matter what the test is. You deliver God's best in. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why? That's why. That's why you are blessed. Who told you? Who lied? Who lied? Who lied? Who lied and told you? Who told you that you weren't meant for greatness? Who lied? Who lied? Who told you? Who lied? Who lied? Who lied? Oh, 
for greatness. You are everything that you envision. You are everything that God created you to be. You are his king. You are the, you are his soldier. You are his rock. So praise the Lord, everybody. All you got to do is pick up your shoes and just do what you got to do now. The Lord is waiting on you just to realize that you are, are, are everything that he created you to be. Who lied, who lied, who told you? Who lied, who lied, who told you? Who lied to you? Who lied to you? This being open mic night and everyone being on program already reading, I would like to open it up once again to people if they would like to read again. I re I just now wrote something because all the, all these words of wisdom in here got got my my thoughts going. It's not quite finished, but it's gonna be all right. Stumbling, stumbling through life unaware of my surroundings, yet aware of my surroundings because this is Watts Bompton. Wondering how and what I'm going to be, how am I going to make, or how am I make it? What am I going to do to make my name Omari Iman Wallace, highest faith Wallace, a name my son, who I plan to name Socrates, can be proud of and proud to claim. I am what some refer to as an educated fool, a cosmopolitan with the gift of gab and a pride of Mufasa. As I slowly grow into the man that the laws of this so-called democracy claim I am, my biggest worry is succumbing to the so-called underprivileged I was born into, being from the hood. But just because I'm in the hood like ears on a cold night does not mean that I am hood. Yet that doesn't make me a punk, even though I believe in talking things out, don't mean I don't know a thing or two about the art of fisticuffs. But I say all this to say that no matter how educated this fool may be, I'm still learning. And the lesson I am stuck on, and probably will be stuck on for some time, is how to put my pride away. Amen. Now I would like to welcome my pastor, the pastor of the church on the corner of humanity and divinity. Pastor Rosalind K. Brookings. Come on, everybody. Let's give God a hand and clap of praise. Hallelujah. Jamea, this thing is off the hook. Yes, yes, yes. This is the time where we change the story. This is the time that you can come and get your cliff and your clair. This is the time, this is the time that you can say, who lied, who lied, who lied? Can I praise him the way I want to praise him? Who lied, who lied, who lied? This is the time that you can look towards the hills from which cometh your help and knowing that all of your help will come from God alone and God the Son, God the Father, and God the truth. This is the time. Huh? This is the time that you do an invitation and an and, and inventory of who you are and where you sit and how well you will be able to behave after this. This is the time that you change the story. And I want to help you change the story because I want to invite you to join me with Jesus because I roll with who you're rolling with. I roll with Jesus the Christ, the one.